Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, my lovely people at home. Today is 22nd of March, 2022. And it's time for our morning devotion. Can we invite your families so that we can pray and study the word of the Lord? Let us pray. In Jesus' name, our Heavenly Father, we worship you. We give you all the praise. We thank you for a new day. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your word again. We plead with you, Lord Jehovah, that your word will prevail in our lives and we will be obedient children. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So our topic for today's devotion is divine distinction. Meanwhile, we are using the daily devotional, the daily fountain of the Anglican Communion. The topic again is divine distinction. We are taking our text from Exodus 8 from 20 to 32. I read from NIV version. Exodus 8 verse 20. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh as he goes to the water and say to him, This is what the Lord says, let my people go, so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies and even the ground where they are. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there, so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous signs will occur tomorrow. And the Lord did this. Then swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and into the houses of his officials. And throughout Egypt, the land was ruined by the flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice your God here in the land. But Moses said, That would not be right. The sacrifices we offer the Lord our God will be detestable to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in their eyes, we they not stone us. We must take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God as he commands us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go to offer sacrifices to the Lord your God in the desert but you must not go very far now pray for me Moses answered as soon as I leave you I will pray to the Lord and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people only be sure that Pharaoh does not act deceitfully again by not letting the people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord then Moses led Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord did what Moses asked. The flies led Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Not a fly remained. But this time also Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let the people go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in our text today, you can see Egypt, you can also see Pharaoh. Egypt is a symbol of bondage, a symbol of 
slavery to sin. And also, it can also be a, a, a symbol of refuge. Because why the people of Israel went to Egypt in the first place it was because they were seeking for refuge. There was famine in the land and they had to go to, to Egypt in search of food. Also, Pharaoh is a symbol of enemy of God, an arch enemy to God, devil, who would not want the children of God to serve him the way God would want us to serve him. And so that is why God was placing a demand, asking Pharaoh, let my people go. God wanted the children of Israel to leave Egypt so that they can go to the promised land and be free to serve him. But Pharaoh would not. And so that is how it is. Even in our time today, the devil would not want us to serve the Lord. I want to tell you, children of God, that you can't be in Egypt and serve God the way he wants you to serve him. You can't be living in sin. You can't be in bondage of sin and be claiming to be serving God. That is the reason why God was demanding that the children of Israel should leave the land of Egypt so they can serve the Lord. And so before I even proceed further, I want to say that I noticed something. Before God does anything, in the land of Egypt, he will always speak to Moses. And Moses will go and declare that word to Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, if you do not let my people go, I will do this. And this thing will happen tomorrow. And exactly as Moses declared it, that is how it will be. And so it's just like it, even in our time today, in spiritual warfare, you need to receive the rema the word of God and speak to your situation and your situation will not will not have any option than to obey the word of God because God is always watching God is always watching his word to perform it He's always ready to perform that which he has spoken and so I don't know the situation that you are I don't know your your Pharaoh today I don't know your Egypt today but I want you to to address that situation by the living word of God. And that situation will come in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, if you go further, the plagues that had been the first, second, third plagues happened in all the land of Egypt. But this time around, God said, I will make a distinction. Remember, our topic says divine distinction. Here God says, I will make a distinction. I will separate my people from the people of Egypt. This fourth plague, the plague of flies, was only meant for the people of Egypt. If you look at the scriptures, the Bible says no swarm, no fly, no single fly was seen in Goshen where the people of Israel were dwelling. Why did God do that? God did this to demonstrate to the people of Israel that he cares for them. He is capable of protecting them. He is capable of, of hearing their prayers. He is capable of delivering them. And to the, 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 the Egyptians, he wants to show them that he judges the wicked. He wants to show them that he is in charge in the land. You know, e Egyptians, they worship many gods. God wanted to show that he is the almighty God. He is the one that is in charge, not the gods of the Egyptians. And so he separated the, 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 this plague was able to, to come upon the Egyptians alone. And the Egyptians suffered the plague. But the gods of the Egypt were not able to deliver them. Praise the Lord. I will come back to this. So this divine distinction, since it is our, uh, our, our, the, topic, the topic of our meditation, 
again, look at what uh, uh, Pharaoh said. He said, Moses, okay, you people can go and worship the Lord, but you can stay here and worship the Lord. But that was not the demand of God. The, the demand of God is that they should leave the land of Egypt and go and worship the Lord, the promised land where the Lord will lead them to. But Pharaoh was saying, you people can do it here. That is what the devil does these days. He wants you to, yeah, you can go to church, you can serve the Lord, but you can still remain a sinner. You can hear the word of God, but don't go far. Don't study the word. Don't do this. He will tell you what to do. The devil will want you to serve God in his own terms. That is why people are not ready to go further in serving God today. They, they want to serve God in Egypt. And so many people say they are born again, but there's no difference when they were, from when they were living in the world and when they say they, have, uh, uh, got, they are born again. There is no difference. They are serving the Lord, but they are still in Egypt. They are still living in sin. They are still in the bondage of sin. That is what Pharaoh wanted the children of Israel to do. You can serve the Lord, but just stay here and serve the Lord. But remember, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, 6 to 7, it says, as you have received the Lord Jesus as, as your Savior, walk ye in him. Be rooted. Be deeply rooted in the Lord. God wants us to be deeply rooted so that we can serve him better. If you are not ready to go extra mile with the Lord, you are not yet ready to serve him. So it is not possible for you to serve God while living in sin. God demands that you totally leave the land of, of Egypt, that you live the life of sin, that you be liberated from the bondage of sin. Praise the Lord. And so, I want us to know that there will still be a distinction. I will take us to, to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, we'll read from verse 30, 25, we'll read from 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left divine separation divine distinction you may be saying eh, god may not do it but i want to tell you that there will still be a divine distinction. God will not treat everybody the same on the last day. He will not. There will be people that will be on his right hand. There will be people that will be on his left hand. Whether you believe it or not, God will separate the wicked from the righteous. Praise the Lord. On the last day, there will be rejoicing and praising for some people, while some people, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. God is not unjust. He judges rightly. And also, you child of God, you that you say you're a child of God, if you are standing for God, the Bible says, I have set the righteous apart for myself. God, even here on earth, God has always set apart the righteous for himself. Even there are so many testimonies about this. In some families where they say, once you reach 50, then death will come. So some families, they say nobody exceeds 50 in their home. But once you have given your life to Jesus, once you are a real child of God, that does not happen to you because you are different. God will always show that this one is his own. So on the last day, it shall see happen. Even divine separation, the wicked will be separated 
from the, the righteous. Many people are serving God today. Why? They are still in Egypt. They are serving God in, terms, in, in, in Pharaoh's time. Even the preachers today. That is why you will hear on the last day, go, I do not know you. Get out from me, I do not know you. Even these people that are serving the Lord, yet they were workers of iniquity. Workers of iniquity, even though they are serving God. That is serving God in Egypt. And God will say on the last day, depart, I do not know you. I don't know where you will belong. I don't know whether you will be the goats. I don't know whether you will be the sheep. Where do you think you belong to? You know yourself. You can, it's not possible for you to dwell in Egypt and still be serving God. You can't serve God in the terms of Pharaoh. You can't serve God the way you want it. You must, God demands total obedience. He demands total obedience. When Pharaoh was speaking to, to Moses, he said, Let just your people you should not go far. Yes, they just serve the Lord here. That is what Pharaoh wanted. That is what God wants. The, the, the devil wants you to do. But God demands total deliverance from sin. Total, total uh, repentance. You must not be in Egypt and serve the Lord. There must be a difference. Praise the Lord. And so, we should learn from this passage not to be hardened to the promptings of God as Pharaoh did. There are many signs and wonderful works God has done in and around us and yet many decide to live in unbelief. Some of us also are hard like Pharaoh. Even though they are seeing the goodness of God, they are still living in unbelief. Just like I said before, serving God while still living in sin, even though we are hearing the word of God. No matter how many how Christians try to evangelize, many still remain adamant. Many still remain adamant to the word of God, even though they be hearing the word of God, hearing everything, without knowing that there will be a divine distinction. You know, the Bible says that a fool thinks in his heart that there is no God. They don't think that uh, that they always think that life ends here. Even some people that say, eh, if we go to hell, uh, because we are going to be many, we will to the hell. It's not possible. There is going to be weeping for some people, gnashing of teeth, and they are, they are also going to be rejoicing and praises for the people of God. A hardened heart is the devil's playground. We should also learn from Moses to keep following God's mandate by ministering and showing forth the works, or the wonderful works God does around us. Moses was obedient to, do, to God. He was doing exactly what God wanted him to do. Say, Moses, go and declare unto Pharaoh. He will go and declare unto Pharaoh. We should learn that from him, to do the mind of God, to do the mandate of God, to be obedient to the wonderful works of God and be instrument of, of righteousness. We can be instrument of that wonder. We can be instrument of, of miracle. We, when we give our lives totally to him, God can use us to bring forth wonderful things even in and around us in the name of of Jesus Christ. So, I want you to bear in mind, child of God, I don't know how you are serving the Lord. I don't know whether you are thinking that God is going to treat any, everyone as he has always, you know, everyone the same on the last day. It's not going to be so. I want you to make up your mind today to serve God and to serve him totally. To serve God in righteousness to go further with the Lord if you have given your life to Jesus you need to go further you need to go deeper even in the Word of God how do you go deeper you go deeper by studying the Bible
you go deeper by devoting yourself in prayers. You go deeper and further by the, the way you obey the Lord. Because when you obey the Lord, you are pleasing the Lord and the Lord will be pleased with you and reveal himself more to you. Praise the Lord. The Lord Almighty will strengthen you even to go further. Even though not in the terms of Pharaoh. No, Pharaoh said, just stay here. You can get the Bible, but don't read it. Some people have Bibles in their homes, but they don't read it. On Sunday, they will dust it very well and take it to the church. Sometimes the devil will equally make them to go late when the word of God has been read and the, the, the sermon has passed. They will carry the Bible like that and come and jump at home. The devil will tell you, don't worry, you are still serving the Lord. At least you went to church now without knowing that we are being deceived. There is going to be a divine distinction. Don't serve God carelessly. Don't serve God in your own terms because there is going to be a reward for everything. The way God separated the Egyptians from the people of Israel, the, the land of Goshen, that is how God indeed will separate his people from the people of the world. Don't live in worldliness. Don't, see, don't, don't go and dwell in sin and be pretending that you are serving the Lord. Some of us are in church, in different arms of the church. Some in youth fellowship, some in, in guild of seawalls, some in Airfag. Yet, we are still in Egypt. There is going to be a divine distinction on the last day. Where will you belong to? Will you, there was going to be a hell fire, a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And there is going to be a new Jerusalem. I want to believe God that you are hoping for a new Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. We are believing you and praying that on the last day when you will be separated the goat from the sheep, may we not cry. May we be counted worthy. May we be among the sheep, the lambs of the Lord. Father, Lord, help us. Help us to totally obey you. Help us to serve you even in totality in your own terms, not in our own terms. Father, be thou exalted, be thou glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.